This is a big release and there's loads of new features, so we better get some talking done here, some serious talking. The response since we launched Central Control just over two months ago has been nothing short of amazing, and it's been great to see how you've been using it in your own productions and what you've been doing with it. Now, we haven't spent the last two months sleeping. As you know, we released 1.1 just over a month ago, and now we're back with 1.2, which brings to the table some of the most requested features. Here's a few of them. By far the most requested feature since we launched Central Control was support for this, the Elgato Stream Deck. And in 1.2, we support all three models. I believe this to be the best Stream Deck implementation on the market today. Once you add one to your project, you can set colors for each state, a label, a background image, and of course, as you'd expect, full layering support. In addition to the features you'd expect, we've also got some interesting integration just for my TriCaster family. Keys can have live video thumbnails, effect icons, and also composition thumbnails, which update as you change snapshots on the TriCaster. Now, many users of Central Control will be familiar with another app which does kind of similar things. No, not that one. BitFocus's Companion is a great app for controlling multiple devices from a Stream Deck, but wouldn't it be cool if we could use central control control surfaces to control companion buttons? Well, now you can, with full feedback support. Central Control 1.2 provides full companion interoperability, which gives central control users a whole new world of devices to control. Now for one you probably weren't expecting. We now have support for Microsoft's PowerPoint, meaning you can use any device in central control to control your presentation. Not only can we advance through slide by slide, but we also have the ability to jump to a specific slide, start the presentation, the end of the presentation, whatever you wanna do. Better yet, PowerPoint doesn't even need to be the foreground window. This one's quite interesting. A HTTP listener device has been added, which allows you to trigger 64 virtual buttons and 64 virtual faders from any device capable of sending simple HTTP requests. A great use of this is to trigger central control from a TriCaster using its great built-in macro system. For example, to control a PowerPoint presentation as we just discussed. Also, it's possible to send a HTTP request to central control to get the state for each button, allowing you to build a custom control panel. To go with this, we've also added a HTTP requester, allowing you to send simple HTTP requests straight from central control. This one is really useful. Many of you asked for the ability to control fader commands from something that isn't a fader, for example, an encoder or a button. With virtual faders, you add one of these devices to your project and you get 32 virtual faders. You can either set the value relatively using an encoder or an absolute value using a button. That'll do it for this video. There are some features I didn't discuss and a couple of extra devices. For a full list of changes, I'd encourage you to check the Central Control blog. Now, for all this great new functionality and new devices, how much do you have to pay? You don't. You go to the download page, download it, install it, and you have all of the stuff I've just mentioned right there ready to use. I'd also encourage you to like our Facebook page and subscribe to this channel because we've got a lot more content coming in the next few weeks. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video and I'll see you next time.